Ooh, the light is a little bright. <laughs> All right, waiting for others to pop on. Hey, Monica, how are you? Fine, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Just uh, giving it a second for people to pop in here. Hopefully it's more than just me and you. <laughs> sure it will be. <laughs> um, I know Jess was going to try to come on, but she had a work meeting that came up yesterday at the same exact time as this, so I was like, ugh. Yeah. You'll miss. Okay. Give it a go. Oh, here's some more people. Hey, she made it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just hung up from a phone call. <laughs> perfect timing. I am. I'm good. How are you? This is a little bright. It's light. Turn this down. So, just giving it another couple seconds for people to jump on if they're going to. Kind of went to look at last month's briefly. And I was like, oh, we started off with just what, you and Jessica, I think? Yeah, you know, I, and I think I was at my daughter's batting practice or something, so I like hopped in the car <laughs> and I was like, listen, I ain't going to be doing this too much longer. Nobody's showing up. <laughs> um, I was like, oop, I was one yeah. that said I was coming. And what was last month? Can I think last, I don't know if I posted. Kindred, I think. Was that the latest? I can't even look. I or can't maybe, even no, look. Blackout was the one I was looking at. That's it. Yeah, so Kindred I have not posted, but I will probably do that tomorrow. Talicia, welcome. Okay. Um, I was like, I finished both of the books. I was excited and I didn't make it. And this month I was excited and didn't finish it. <laughs> yeah, this one was a good one. I actually read about, I did the audio book. Well, I like to do both simultaneously, but I did the audio book because yeah. that helps me actually meet deadlines because if I just depend on myself to read it <laughs> it ain't gonna happen um but I actually had to go into the office on Monday so it's a 45 commute one way and then oh. I was mailing out packages to the schools in Georgia and stuff like that so as I was doing that I so I probably listened to about three or four hours of it just on Monday alone and was able to finish it I need to do that. that to do both usually I do it, either yeah. book or audio yeah, and, um, I like to do both. It's for just, a few of them, I've done both, and I really like it. Yeah, it's um, it helps. Look, I did both. Yeah, because if I don't do that, I will just take forever. Like I had to. Mm -hmm. I'm reading Jasmine Guillory's latest, and I have it mm -hmm. ebook and physical copy, and it's taking me. I mean, it's not bad, but it's just taking me forever. So I actually had to drop it and then start the book of the month so I could get through it. But I just, if I don't have that like audio portion of it to push me. Unless it's really good, yeah. like I just, it I, it will take me forever. So I'm going to hop <laughs> back to it and hopefully get in my groove. But TV is taking over. Um, been watching Netflix. Over. Squid Games. Amazing. Like that. I don't know. If I haven't seen watched that. that, but it was oh on God. when I was at the cigar lounge one day. And I was like, oh, oh what is this? Yes. And then it, I couldn't get away from it. I was like, okay, I have to go to a meeting, but I'm at yeah. the cigar lounge watching Squid Game. <laughs> yes. If you, it's a little gory in some parts, but if you yeah. can get past that, brilliant. It's only like nine or 10 episodes, but it's, br it's brilliant. It's just. I saw some of it and I was like, ooh, this is uh, interesting. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I guess we'll get started if anybody else wants to pop on. They'll feel free to do that. Um, like I said, I don't, I mentioned to Monica earlier that Jess 
had a meeting that came up yesterday at the same time as this. So if she can pop on, she'll pop on later. Um, not sure who else. There was 14 people that RSVP'd and here we are. So <laughs> um, for those of you, uh, this lighting is kind of bad, but we are covering The Dating Playbook um, by Farrah Rashawn. Such a cute, cute read. Um, I'm a sucker for anything romance. So for me, this is like right up my alley. What did you ladies think? It was decent. <laughs> I got yeah. 40 minutes left. So I think I'm just about there. But oh, Okay. So you're not, yeah, you're not. You're probably going through the. Uh... He's talk, he, uh, He's at the grave site with um, Silas' sister and sister. Okay, yeah. confessing or figuring out. Yeah, all of that stuff. Okay, um, so at that point they're kind of fighting mm-hmm. um, in the book. Okay, so um, I love that you know Taylor is one of the three. Like this is the date. You know um, the boyfriend project number two. Um, there is going to be a third. I don't know if y'all knew that, but London story will come out next summer. So I'm excited for that. Um, I love Jamar. I, I thought he was sweet. Um, for me, you know, it, it's your typical romance book. It's, it's the, the lovey dovey, the, the tropes of I dislike you, or there's this problem why we can't be together. And then somehow they end up falling for each other despite all of that. And then, you know, the pitfalls and then the making up and getting back together and living happily ever after. So it's your, your typical uh, romance novel, um, contemporary romance novel. And so I loved all of it. Um, you know, that, that's just what I live for. I live for this kind of book. So it's, it's perfect for me. Um, I was looking at the back of the book. I don't know if y'all have the physical copy, but it did have some book, book club discussions. And so this one was interesting to me. Um, it says the the fake dating trope is a popular one for romantic comedies. Do you find them believable? Have you ever encountered a real life fake dating story? So for me, for me, this, I like this one because it wasn't your typical like enemies to lovers. Like most of them, it's they're bumping heads or they hate each other for some reason and then they end up being lovers anyway. So I kind of liked that she was skeptical about them, but they still could have like a business working relationship where they could get along and, and figure out, you know, what they're doing. Um, I also, one thing that I do that's expected in romance novels that I hate is the fact that, you know, they're going to fall out about something. There's always going to be that part in the story where they hate each other because this person said something out of anger or did something and they hate, and I hate that. What I loved about this book, it was that that lasted like 2.5 seconds. So it was like, it happened, but it wasn't like some books, like just, it goes on forever and chapters and chapters. And it's like, okay, what is it gonna take months, years for y'all to get back together? So I loved that um, that was quick. So what did y'all think about this uh, fake dating trope? Was it believable? I knew she wasn't gonna make it. (laughs) (laughs) I know, it was like, (laughs) these guys look too good it's just like you're just gonna have a professional relationship and just that's it yeah okay and then she kind of set herself up the one thing you didn't want was a relationship and so the first thing you blurt out is this pretend relationship to kind of save him right (laughs) and so it's like okay so not only are you trying to stay away from love now you have to pretend that you guys are in love and in a relationship so you're you're having to do the things that you wanted to stay you know stay away from to save face so it's like here we go. Um, yeah, she didn't last long at all. She came. <laughs> I mean, and I understand why she did it, although I felt like the whole fake relationship thing wasn't really necessary. Like, I felt like she didn't have to lie to that uh, reporter just to kind of save him. Right. It, yep. There could have been a, a, an easier, probably even more believable story he could have told him if he didn't want the reporter to know that he was training to get back into the NFL, but totally agree. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. That's what I felt like too. Um, And I, uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. It was something. The idea of like actually having a playbook. I'm like, (laughs) this is how we're going to plan our relationship and we're going to go on fake dates and we're going to do this. And it was like, okay, like you're, (laughs) you're not really just going to go with the flow. You're going to plan this out on how you're going to date and how you're going to make this work and make appearances and show up on TikToks and things like that. Like it was, it was a lot of effort. Like I, yeah, 
when it um, could have just been easier for him to say, hey, I'm training. Right. Yeah. And the other thing too is um, I used to be so against, and I still kind of am, workplace relationships. Now to me, this is kind of a different scenario because it's not like this huge company where it could just, you know, you guys break apart, you go your separate ways, that's it. Um, but my place where I work, we actually have couples that are in the office. They're married now, okay? And I think that they came on to after they were married, right? So it wasn't like they started dating in the office. But to me, it was like, this is the first workplace that I've ever been where they have husband and wives working. They're in different departments, but still working in the same agency. And that just to me was like, okay, people can do this. If they're working in different departments, it can work. They don't essentially have to work with each other on a daily basis, but it was like the first instance I've ever seen marriages, relationships in the same office. And to me that, I guess, just opened my mind to, you know, something I'm different. Because I live it. You know, really? my husband and I both work for the same uh, agency. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We fact, have two co- it, we've, it's been like that for um, several years now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm proof of that. Yeah. And that's it like, to work. me, it was eye-opening because I just was like, nope, dating in the office is a big no-no. And I still feel like I wouldn't date someone who's in my direct department that I would have to like, you know, work with on a daily basis. And if something went wrong, like we'd still have to work together. Like that wouldn't work for me. But I feel like I could probably date somebody in a different department. I don't know. Because how could my job say no to that? Like, how could they say, you can't. We have two living proof couples <laughs> that work in our agency. You can't tell me that I can't you know, do this. So I don't know. It just gave me a whole new perspective on dating in the workplace. Something to think about. I still would kind of tiptoe on that line, but yeah, if I was already married to somebody, definitely. I see how it could work. I see how it could work if you have a big enough, you know, office area where you're not running into each other, um, working in different departments, possibly different, different floors. So I don't think that I've ever encountered a real life fake dating story well I guess I take that back so I've come across people who are embarrassed of online dating and how they've met their spouse or girlfriend or something like that so uh, and it's more so from guys I don't really get this from women but they'll make up a story like oh we met in the grocery store or something like that just because they don't want to people to know that they met online so that's the only instance where I've seen people come up with you know fake dating stories and how they met or they're that's what they're telling everybody else because I obviously know how they really met but (laughs) some of my best friends have done that and I'm like what's the like who cares online dating is so common these days like everybody is literally meeting like that these days so what's the big deal just go for it um mm. Yeah, we already talked about that. What are your thoughts on couples whose relationships begin in a professional capacity? So it says Jamar took it upon himself to care for his family, Silas's family, and Taylor. How do you feel about Jamar's instinct to take care of everyone? Where do you think this comes from? Um, For me, I feel like it comes from Silas's death. I feel like he, from that point, felt like he didn't take care of his friend in his time of need which caused he feels he's at fault for his death for not answering those text messages and things like that so I think he took on this burden of he now has to take care of everybody and make sure everybody's okay and you know tend to everyone um oh, guilt. what'd you oh, say guilt. yeah yeah so I feel like that that was a huge part of why he was the way he was and I love that about him though that he was very caring um when it came to his relationships and and I love the way that he was with Taylor too he was very everything like so encouraging like like, I love that like building her business what can I do to when they were fighting he still made it a point to plug her business and help her in that way even like it didn't work out for him and his professional career and what he was going to do, but he still found a way to, um, 
you know, plug her. So I feel, I love that caring side of him. Was there anything about Taylor or Jamar's journey that you connected to on a personal level? When, um, so I went to Farrah, Farrah had a, um, a um, gosh, book release party here. I'm in New Orleans, by the way. Oh, she nice. had a book release party for this on the day that um, it was released. And with that, she had a, a discussion about this book. And one of the things that I asked her was um, typically when you, when you read series, I find that the authors tend to save the, and I called it the weakest character for the final book in a series, or mm -hmm. it's the one that you least connect with for some reason or the other. Right. Sometimes it's the youngest or whatever. <laughs> but I asked her, why did she take Taylor, use Taylor for book two? instead of, you know. London, yeah, and then Taylor, yep. So um, what she said made a lot of sense. You know, she said that Taylor, cause she even called Taylor, Taylor's the one who's like the biggest hot mess. You know, she's all over the place. She's not focused, she's, she means well, but you know, she actually connected with um, Taylor more than the other characters. Although Farrah did say that London is her favorite. So really mm. looking forward to seeing what she does with London because yeah. she's saved the best for last. Right. But, um, and you know, I asked her that question without having read the book, but since then I find that, hmm, yes, Taylor is a hot mess, but she kind of reminds me of me when I was that age, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm past my twenties, <laughs> a little right. bit way past my twenties, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> You know, I remember being unfocused, not really, you know, wanting so much, but not knowing how to get it or not going about it the right way, mismanaging money, the whole nine yards. So I really ended up connecting with her more than I thought I would. Mm -hmm. Real so, life struggles. Yeah. yeah. And I, I felt that. And especially even with her, her disability, like, you know, her learning disabilities, I think that was really cool that she brought that up because it's more common for people than you think. And so many people might have those same frustrations and not be aware that there is something wrong. Like, you know, why am I having a hard time grasping this? And in, you know, even just the little, someone reading a test, test questions out to her aloud, like just that little help. So I love that um, she shined a light on, on her disabilities. And I think that made Taylor more lovable is like she had, she wants these goals, but how is she going to accomplish them with all of these factors? You know, she doesn't have the money. She's, you know, got to sell. And I don't know if you guys, there was a bonus chapter in there too, where she had to like sell all of her things. And it just kind of went into depth of like the things she had to sell so that she could, you know, financially just take care of herself. Um, but also in the same aspect too, she had these struggles, but she also didn't know when to say no either. Like she was ashamed to let her friends know, like, I can't afford this dinner that we're going out on <laughs> and I'm using a credit card and I'm having to, you know, come up with these pop-up boot camps to even just pay for the dinner that I ate last night because it was so expensive. So, you know, there was also this part of her where her pride wouldn't let her friends Uh-oh, Renee. I think she's probably time. Or is it me? Oh, okay, I thought it was my connection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been having connection problems. She's on a roll, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still on. We'll see if we get kicked out. Probably gonna get kicked out. <laughs> yeah. You're oh. the host now. <laughs> I'm the host now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how that happens, but um it's like the conversation's too good to just cut you all off. <laughs> <laughs> the one who didn't even get close to finishing the book this month. <laughs> oh, really? 
I'm not yeah, scared of romance at all, but I thought this one was kind of cute. It, it I like, yeah. I enjoyed it, but I'm not a romance fan at all. I was like, oh God, another romance. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't that, do a whole lot of romance. Of escapism. I may here and there, but not frequently. But this one, uh, it seemed cute. It did. They're all typically the same, like what she was describing. They're all like the same. And they come, they have these weird, crazy scenarios. One goes off to Switzerland, and by chance, the other one ends up in Switzerland, too. You know, (laughs) they have some crazy scenarios and romances. That's it. It's all about the all about the 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 romance, the drama, the the over the topness, you know, <laughs> the unbelievableness of it. Mm-hmm. Well, you... Cause, Sorry about cause that, y'all. True. I guess my internet is acting crazy. So y'all just keep going if I pop out. I don't know. The whole thing shut down. So I was like, I hope y'all are still <laughs> yeah. still hanging in. And I was yeah. gonna say true romance yeah. is boring. I mean, just regular everyday. <laughs> you know, um, but is... yeah, it was. I was saying that I don't. <sighs> this internet. I was saying. Oh man. Uh, she disappeared. Yeah, video was on. Oh well. Ridiculous. Sorry, y'all. I may have to jump on my iPad or something because this computer is not acting right right now. But um what I was saying is Taylor could have been the more responsible person by backing out of dinners and stuff like that to be financially responsible, but at the same time, I think she knew her friends wouldn't let her do that. Like they would pay for her or something like that. So I think it was a pride thing that she was like, listen, I gotta do this and just make up the money somewhere, somehow else. Mm-hmm. I um, agree. But I think it was a little bit more than pride because that's how she got into the situation she is in now. It was more than just dinners with her friends. That's just how she was living her life, privileged yeah. like that. Irresponsibly. <laughs> right. <laughs> and also, um, you know, for, to be fair, she, this this trio of friends really just came together within, you know, less than a year's time. So I don't think she knew them. I, I look at it as she didn't know them well enough to to rely on them financially. That's true. Plus I forget that from the first story. Yeah, yeah, yeah we still. forget that. Yeah. yeah. It is still a new um, friendship that they met randomly online. Mm-hmm. Um, so over, it's probably been a year no, old like this at that point yeah over a cheat and catfishing over. dude remember you know, <laughs> yes <laughs> from the boy from project yeah it's how they got internet famous mm-hmm. um <laughs> let me grab my book why does she call him 23 i was too lazy to go back and i did a I'm search assuming for and couldn't that was find his it. number and his football college. number right yeah. that was my I'm assumption I Jersey so maybe, but i couldn't find it yeah was there anything about Taylor or Jamar's journey that you connected with on a personal level? For me, Taylor's struggle with coming up as a Black woman and making your own, I think I can relate to that. Um, been there, done that with that kind of struggle. How about y'all? I'm at 28%. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just seeing uh-huh. Taylor chase her dreams, you know, and I guess now that um, I'm kind of like at that point in my, fa- in my life where like I've been working for X amount of years and like I can do this till I retire or I can kind of change my path and do something I really love. So that's kind of like where I'm going now. So even though I'm twice as well, not as not that much older than her, but even though I'm than her, I understand her journey and I see her chasing her passion and I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I think I and wish I had done that at my at, at her age. Uh, yeah. And she's kind of motiv- made, motivated me in the sense there's so much more that I could be doing with Book Girl Magic, but I just don't. Um, a part of it is just this fear of getting myself into something that I can't handle. Um yeah, it's like, I mean, it's getting to the point where I'm starting to get contracted jobs and I get money for posting this book and that book and making appearances here and there. So that's good, but I want to do something more consistent. And a lot of people have been asking for apparel. So I think, yeah, I think that's, 
that's the next step for me though. I'm very particular. Like I want it done a certain way. I want the shirts to feel a certain way. Like I'm very picky. So for me, like the clothing that I have for myself is perfect. Like I love the way it is, but I'm also not going to pay this person. Like I paid $45 for a sweatshirt. I can't make a profit. Like I'd have to sell that for damn near $60 even just to make 15 off of it, you know? So for me, it's, it's finding the right person who's not going to do it for cheap. So I think I'm headed in the right direction. Um, I've had some companies reach out to me. So today, actually, I started the process of reaching out and seeing what they can come up with and see if I can do it. Because another thing that I didn't want to do is I don't want to make the shirts myself because I have a cricket. I can do that, but I don't want to. I don't have the time. I also don't want to ship it. I want someone else to pay somebody else to ship it, to make it, to do all of that. And it just, once the order comes in, you take care of it. So, so- that finding a distributor is another thing that was that's going to do it the way I want was a hard part so without like sucking me dry you know where I'm only making a couple bucks off of a shirt so I don't know we'll see but I'm working on it so I'm finally going to take that leap and do something because so many people are like anytime I post a mug where did you go you know is that for sale and for years people have been asking me for that stuff so I'm like all right guys <laughs> it's time it's so, your name to good. live it up. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I want another source of income. This would be easy. Just sell clothes that people already want. Like, people love books. They'll 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 buy the stuff. So I'm like, give everybody what they want. I was gonna do candles. Yeah, my life has no time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I I bought everything I needed, and that was the plan to roll out this summer until um. My grandfather passed away and that's kind of where I halted the breaks, but it was kind of a good thing. Cause I just, I mean, kids have sports practices and things like that. It's just not realistic for me to be able to sit around and make candles like weekly, daily, nightly. I can't, I can't. So I've got to find something that works with my schedule. But anyways, Taylor has um, motivated me to like take that leap of faith and, and do something it's like wasting time do something yeah I mean I think she had a good idea um I hate that she had lost a homeschool job and I really wanted to know Mm. I don't know I was confused about why she landed in jail it was like the parents didn't call the cops I don't know it seemed a little weird I think (laughs) I don't know what it ended up being parking tickets and something else that she ended up going to jail for but I can't remember why the cops were I think she said it was just like passing by. That's how I was just, I couldn't remember. the. Yeah, dinner. exactly how they appeared. Yeah, in there, but. I, I, but I wonder. I had a Annie Wilkes moment, you know, Annie Wilkes from Misery mm-hmm. when she went off on, um, on, um, oh gosh, Paul, Paul Sheldon, when they were talking about the chapter plays and he's like, that's not the way it happened. <laughs> you know, I know how it ended in, in the um, boyfriend project with her getting arrested. And then this one opened with her doing something else. And I'm like, well, what happened? It should have started right. with her in jail. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that's not how it happened. Right. But yeah. Yeah. It ended up being kind of like a, a non-factor, but the way that it, it was set up, you know, I was expecting like some, something really big and wow, but it ended right. up being like, oh, a little part of her story. Yeah. 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 It was minimized, but yeah. And then I was wondering, like, as much as we think we like Taylor, is Taylor really well liked? Because I'm trying to think, how are you, what, 24, 25, and you don't really have a really good group of solid friends? Like, it seems like your best friends are people you just came friends with three months ago. And I know, like, you know, a lot of us meet our friends. We have a lot of friends from college. I know she didn't go to college. But then I was like, how did she get from North Carolina to Texas? Because that would explain why she's not in her neighborhood with her high school friends. But I was just wondering, like, how likable is Taylor? You know, is she kind of hard to be one of those people to be girlfriends with? But you know what? And I don't... She was an army brat. In high school or something? Yeah, she was an army brat. An army brat, yeah. She didn't really have a... I I got the feeling that she didn't really have a a strong home base. But the other part for me of why Taylor is so hardened, look at her family. Like her brother was a complete asshole. Like that's how he came off to me when she had her interaction with her. So I feel like this hardened person that she is comes a lot from her brother and his judgments of her and 
her lack of not doing anything with herself. So she's, I feel like she's constantly on the defense when it comes to her family. Yeah, especially when you come from a family of overachievers and you're Mm -hmm. just average at best. Right. And you know that every time you come home, you're going to be faced with, what are you doing? Or your brother throwing insults, you know, Mm -hmm. taking digs and yeah. Didn't like her brother Mm. at all. He kind of backpedaled too. He was like, well, I didn't mean it like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure you yeah, didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, sure you didn't, buddy. Whatever. You knew exactly what you were doing. Um, did your opinion of the characters change at all during the course of reading the dating playbook? Um, I don't think there was ever a time that I disliked Jamar. Taylor was up and down for me. I feel like it was a roller coaster. Um I actually liked him more in the book than I think I liked her. Um, yeah. Just everything she did. I don't know. Just she was, she's just, and I guess that just comes from, I, and I get it, you know, from dating experiences, I get how, why she was the way she was with Jamar. Um, not trusting him and what his intentions were. She dated guys who used her personal personal training and used it to get to her and then kind of displayed her like she was easy to the, her friends and stuff like that so I get why she was so hardened um and I don't know the dating world these days it's hard to believe people for who they are hate to say it but it's true um <laughs> as, as someone who's been down that road many a times this is, I'll go like, I'll date somebody, go on a date, and then I'll like take another six months off because I just, it's emotionally draining. Like, and I mean, literally go on one date with a person. Like, for instance, I'll, well, t- I'll tell you y'all. To the date. I'm not I'll getting t- that message. I'm like, you know what? No, this, this, we're not. Listen, we're not. so I met somebody probably about a week and a half ago. And so there were some things like in text that he would say that just kind of red flagged, right? So it was like, made me just question like if you have such a strong opinion about this like you know are you going to be a fan of the lgbt or supportive of the lgbt community and stuff like that and for me it's like i have family members who you know are part of that community so it's just it's a bigger picture for me more than just you know what what do you stand for but certain things so fast forward um he sends me a instagram friend request right and so I look at the name and this is like, he asked me for my name like a couple days ago. Right. So when the, the request came through on my personal account, I was like, who, who is this? Right now, mind you, this is a 41 year old adult. Okay. <laughs> the, the username was like the N word Gideon and then his year. Right. Oh. And I was like, you're a 41 year old adult and this is your Instagram name. So I didn't accept it. And I don't even know if the request is still there. He probably un- <laughs> took it back, but I didn't accept it because a, that name was just like, mm-hmm. you're 41 years old. And this is what your, your user, like, this is who you are as a person. And this is a representation of you. Um, you have zero pictures. You want me to add you as a friend and then you get exposed to my entire world, my kids, everything. Like I'm very, everything I do is on social, well, most is on social media, vacation pictures, all of that. So it's like, you're going to get to know what my children look like, more about me and you're offering nothing, right? Um, so all that to say, we went on a first date Sunday, went to the Braves game. It was the most boring, like I'm a huge, you know, I played softball, I love baseball, most boring date ever. Like literally it was just me like making conversation the whole time, had nothing to say. It was like, now the gesture, he knew I'd never been to the new Brave Stadium and stuff like that. So the gesture, the thoughtfulness of him, everything that built up to that was like, okay, we might be going somewhere with this guy. He's six, three, you know, he's, he's a father of two daughters, like got his stuff together, got his own carpet cleaning business. But it was like, it just, you know, it, pulling teeth to like have conversation like nothing if I wasn't talking about it and then the other thing too is and I hate to be like 
judgy like this, but it's like, if you're asking me questions about what's going on in the baseball, like that just as a sports fan and someone who played softball all my life, like the fact that you're asking me questions, like that just made me feel some type of way. I'm like, this ain't it, dude. Like you are asking I, simple questions. Well, why did this happen? Why is he on third? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. Like, so anyways, like that date, we ended up leaving in the seventh inning out of nine. And I'm like, oh, thank God he wants to leave. Like, I'm ready to get the hell out of here and get back to my kids. And I'm missing my daughter's softball practice for this. Um, So then I text him, you know, I'm home. Thanks for everything. And he said, no problem at all. Thanks for coming out. And then said something like he was at the store. I didn't respond to that. Have not talked to him since. Like, it's just, we've completely ghosted each other. Like, that's just what it was. But for me, it was like, I can't. The conversation was good, but then there were certain things. And then the Instagram username, and it just was like, you think you have something and you waste all this time, like, a, you know, talking every single day and just this energy. And I just, it's like, okay, now I'll go back into my hole and not date for another six months. Cause I just, it can't, I'm emotionally spent. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh yeah. He, yeah. And so, <laughs> so I don't even know if y'all will be able to see this, but his user the name that he has on there is ponytail tony and then the profile picture is dz nuts d's nuts six (laughs) i'm like i can't yeah it's gonna be hard for y'all to see that but yeah n-word odion sticking up their middle finger and i'm like granted i don't think i'm the cutest person in the world but did you look at my profile and (laughs) did you think that we were like in the same league like all your middle fingers are up your gold teeth out. Oh my gosh. You, your job yes. is your CEO of the hard knocks. <laughs> yes. I, I just, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what made you think that we. The gonna... struggle is re- like, we need to write a collective book on just dating marriage, <laughs> like all of us in Book Girl Magic, because I'm sure we have stories for days, but that's exactly what I look like. Like what about my profile says, come hit me up. Like I just, and POF is the worst because there's no filter or no swiping or matching. Anybody can just slide into your inbox. Like this guy constantly, and I finally blocked him, but his opening line will literally be like, come here. Like, what? Hello? How are you? It's just come here. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. So it's, I get where Taylor's coming from with her skepticisms about these guys that are dating because you just don't know. It's like they can put on this, you know, mask of of who they are and present themselves some way but then slowly it like starts to come out and it's it's so hard it's like I hate that I love reading romances like this because I feel like no one is ever going to live up to the men in these books I love the fairy tales the romance and all of that and like the relationship that I was in last year none of that doesn't have a romantic bone in his body like nothing when, when jamar said that he went to go j- grab her door handle <laughs> and her door handle wasn't there he's like i gotta buy her a whole new car and i was thinking <laughs> right. how like he really was like that knight in shining armor you know it wasn't mm-hmm. like it was he really cared about her like let me sit here and take this test you know go through this test with you let yes. me make sure you have a safe card like why you know yeah you know no you don't need to stay in no crummy hotel I have a pool house, stay here. And I, don't, I didn't see it as baiting. I thought right. I, like, I genuinely care kind gestures. about what's going on with you. Yeah. Um, and so I, do you guys think that when he went to her workout that he already liked her? Yes. And I think okay. he kind of admitted that from her yeah, YouTube video. From, from her YouTube. Okay. That's yeah. what I thought. I was like, yeah. I think he kind of saw He had her seen her videos. He kind of targeted her as a trainer, but he also thought she was right. really cute you nailed it like he saw her as a trainer and then continued to dig more research the youtube videos came up and that was kind of his like oh okay well i like that she's stern and that she's kind of like kick ass and that's what initially attracted him so when he saw that opportunity to go see her face to face it was like i'm in there but yeah i (laughs) listen i yeah i don't know it's been a year and i got back on and i'm like Yep, one person and I'm logging back off again. <laughs> I cannot, I literally, uh, I can like, write a I book. I don't know, I keep telling my, my cousin lives in um, 
Maryland. So she's in that DC, Virginia, Maryland area. I'm like, girl, you, it got to be better because you have a bigger area. Whereas in Atlanta, oh, I'm, I'm really, I don't know. I, I didn't know, know you lived in Atlanta. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, well, right see, Atlanta. we got, we got to connect, man. We got to go have That's why a single lane game. game. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Atlanta's hard. Like, it is. It's hard. I, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, my choice is like, hmm, get back with like someone I've been with who doesn't check most of the boxes on there or like continue to try this and hope that someone, you know, falls through, but it's exhausting because half the people you don't know, are they there to really date or are they here to play games and, and mess with your mind? Um, but yeah, there's just certain things I can't overlook. And it's like, if you can't hold a conversation, that's hard. That's a hard no. Now, I didn't yeah. read anything other than the title of this book when I first, you know, when you say you were doing it. I mean, I try to read yeah. all the books for the month anyway, but I was yeah. like, well, maybe I'm going to learn something that I can put in my dating playbook. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, be successful. You took it literally. <laughs> right. So I, I'm going through it. I'm like, when are we getting to like the bullets <laughs> like, went out here in these streets? <laughs> yeah. And you know, what's funny is I find a lot of the dating books that I will read, the guy is the disaster to me. Like the girl usually has her stuff kind of together and the guy a lot of times has some things to work through. But for me, like this story was the reverse. Like he had his stuff together and it was her that was trying to fix things and battle through. Like, yeah, (laughs) it's exhausting. I, yeah. The single life might just be for me. Book Girl Magic will be who I'm married to because <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Um, yeah. Was there a particular scene that stuck with you? And I do have one. Um, this was probably my favorite scene, laugh out loud moment, was when Jamar went home to visit his family and caught his mom and dad in the act. And I was just <laughs> like... <laughs> that to me I laughed out loud so hard that to me was like the best scene of the entire book <laughs> That's Taylor's true, like, I yeah, yeah I they're empty nesters a close second was um Taylor cutting the eggplant and he's like you know that he gives his eggplant a hand molesting job. molesting yeah. vegetables yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I laughed out loud with that too. Yes, he's oh, like you're giving the be- you're giving the eggplant a hand job, but he's- yeah, <laughs> that was. I haven't gotten far, so that so far was my favorite. I, I yeah. actually sat there and laughed at that one. Yes. <laughs> it's like that and the scene with his parents, and it was like you know he's twenty something years old and doesn't think that his parents like still get it in at this age, and he just he's like what. <laughs> dad's pants were at his ankles mom's on the counter skirt hiked up and just he's like yes oh god (laughs) and taylor's like what do you think how do you think you they get you got here like come on man (laughs) uh that for me was classic right i don't know she did she did really good with the details because when um he threw uh taylor on the counter in the pool house I felt like I was at the window like actually watching. watching this and I'm like oh my god I I feel like I can see everything but um that was like a scene that stuck in my head yes yeah she she wrote this really well her sex scenes were really good like I appreciated being able to laugh out loud at certain parts like I think she does a great job she's becoming a new favorite um I know I'm only like have read her um boyfriend project series but she has a ton of other books like a ton Mm -hmm. and you know what's funny to me is like just something and I'm sure those stories are probably just as good but something as simple as changing the cover to be this more like cartoony modern contemporary romance thing this seems to do it because there's so many other authors that we've read um that's kind of like Mia Sosa same thing once they start Mm -hmm. changing over to these covers and they become more appealing to the market people start picking them but I'm like Farrah Sean has a ton when I was looking it up on Amazon earlier today like she has a ton of books in her category I was like I need to go back and like read 
You have to read her Holmes brother series. In fact, you know, I have a favorite show and story when we first met. And I want to say this was like in shoot 2008 or nine or something like that. Mm -hmm. Beverly Jenkins was in town doing a signing at uh, one of the local bookstores. And I went and I met, I met Farrah there because she was there as a Beverly Jenkins fan. Aww. And one thing led to another, we started talking and, you know, she told me she was an author and she was literally had just gotten out of a contract with the publishing company and she had a trunk full of books wow. that she was literally selling out of her trunk. Aww. So I bought the Holmes Brothers series. Now it's um, obviously Holmes Brothers 3. Mm -hmm. It was based in New Orleans um, right after Hurricane Katrina. Oh, wow. So um, really good book. Um, I'm like pulling pulling a blank down on the on a, um, on the titles, but you can find them on Amazon easily. Yeah. And every Was so it a often, romance? Um, not so much, not in a traditional sense as the um, the Boyfriend Project series, but more more contemporary fiction okay. with romance with romantic elements to it. Okay. Um, but really good series. And she's written a lot for Harlequin uh, Kamani as well, because I know she wow. had a whole series, The Sabres, um, whole series about a football team. Oh. She's real, you know, we're big sports fans, football fans, if you haven't noticed. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at the, the Holmes Brothers books right now. So it looks like there's four of them. I think I may have just gotten up to three. Yeah, the fourth one is Chase Me. Um, it's got a girl on the cover. But yeah, that's, and then of course the football huddle with me tonight. There was one that was on sale the other day in this football series that she had. She has a ton of books, The Perfect Holiday Fling. I mean, I'm literally, I'm still scrolling. It's crazy. But it's amazing to me just with marketing, how changing a cover of a book can make you more marketable. For mm -hmm. me, I'd want to change all of the covers on my book. I don't know. And I'm weird like that. Like I like the cartoony Jasmine Guillory friendly contemporary romance, like those covers, like that is appealing to me. So when I see these books with like Fabio that <laughs> on it and stuff like that, like to me, it just, and I know they could be, I do judge a book by, by its cover, mm -hmm. which is sad, but I look at it as like this cheesy romance that I don't want to read. So for me, it does play a big part in what I'm going to read what the book looks like sadly i know it's it's horrible but oh, no i tell you what i don't like books with the six pack all you see is a guy's chest you don't see his head the rest of his body just the just the yeah. torso with the six that's pack. it i'm like Ugh. listen there's you a know, book going around a guy i went to high school who i used to like love in high school like he was a crush of everybody he's on one of those books with his shirt off like <laughs> somewhere but yeah that just those it don't appeal to me doesn't appeal to me so yeah and i'm wondering how difficult it would like for somebody because i feel like if these authors would just change the cover and relaunch it that it might do something different for them um an example of that of a book that is doing that is jane allen and i actually had just posted that i'm doing black girls must die exhausted now for me the first cover was beautiful too so it's you know, she's re-releasing this as if it's like a brand new novel, but we covered this in book club probably two years ago and had Jane on. Um, but I'm actually doing a book club panel, like a virtual discussion with her tomorrow on this, but you know, it's the marketing, like re-releasing books and stuff like that. It's kind of giving them this second chance at selling the book. But I feel like her book, because Bookstagram really took her book from being underground and turned it into something amazing which is how she landed another publishing deal to be able to do this because now she's with Harper Perennial um, and I think she was self-published the first version of this book but the cover was absolutely gorgeous in the first one and I wish I could I need to go find it but um, yeah it's just amazing what changing a cover can do for somebody when it comes to marketing like that is I didn't realize how big of a role that plays in selling books but mm -hmm. If I don't like your cover, <laughs> chance you're not gonna pick it up. Yeah, it's sad, right? I I hate to say that, but mm -hmm. unless it's a book that is a well-known author, 
that I know, you know, somebody that's old school or something like that, then I will go do it. Or if it's something that comes highly recommended by people on Bookstagram or someone in a group, then I will look past that. But if it's at first glance and I'm looking at it, if the cover doesn't grab my attention, I'm not going any further to like read the description and figure it out. Because I, do I That's just like when you were talking about passing, right? Someone had this cover and was like, what? exactly is that <laughs> book yeah and i have two versions of that book and i yeah they're just but then they've revamped it now to have a new cover to reflect the netflix you know documentary or the movie that's coming out too so it's like the new cover is like even pretty four amazon packages that i haven't even opened and that's in one of them but i'm just like you know what <laughs> i'm yeah i'm getting it. i know it's too much i'm gonna probably <laughs> read it the very beginning of november right before um the 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 movie watch on the 11th oh my goodness my kids take a nap at that time i might just log on just yeah <laughs> just do it yeah i was like do it at that time <clears throat> put your headphones in you know you have to be plugged in through a laptop and it was actually pretty fun when we did what was that movie i can't even remember it was um i can't even think of the actress viola davis whatever that movie was the that help? she came up nope no it was something that oh, came Francis? out last year what was it was it fences nope it's something that came out after that and she was a singer or something that's the one oh, with Mom, chad? Rainey's. yes that yeah um, with chadwick i'm sorry yes yes yeah because it was after he, he was after he passed. <laughs> right yeah. that's your cousin right yeah yeah that's what i remember you saying that um <laughs> but it came out after he passed away i think i think it did yeah, yeah. And so we did a watch party with that through the Netflix party app. And it was fun. Like we were all just watching it on our laptops. I started. So everybody else's starts at the same time. And then we just, there's like a chat box and we all can just comment with our commentary through the movie. But, you know. Um, I wondered how that was going to work. That's good. Yeah. For, so um, it basically watch party won't allow me to create a link until just before. So like, you know, I think I did it from 12 at 12 o'clock on Veterans Day. So I will post the link like right before 12. And then once people start logging on, I will press the play button and everybody else who's plugged in, you have to have a Netflix account um, to be able to, you know, watch it. But as soon as I press that button, it presses play on everybody else's computer. And then we're all watching it at the same time. And it has like a little chat box on the side. So we're all just typing in our thoughts as it's going. So uh, cool. we're going to do the same. Before. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. It was a fun way, like through the pandemic to be able to watch something together and have something to do. So we're going to do that again, um, November 11th. I think it's at 12 PM and, uh, just, you know, watch passing together. Whoever wants to join, I'm going to watch it anyway. So, um, my schedule is crazy that week. So that's the only day that I had <laughs> that's a time to do me, it. So. Yeah. Same government holiday for me. <laughs> yes. So I was like, I can do it. If anybody else is off and can join, then feel free to join us. So, um, hopefully it works so you out for most. Send the link. So you send yes. the link. So I don't know. And actually, I don't think I've made, I forgot to make a Facebook event. So I'm going to go ahead and create that tonight for, or actually, I, I think I did create it. Look in the, the is, Facebook is. group. So once I will create the Netflix party link and I will probably post it a couple of minutes before 12, because it wow. only allows me to create it like in real time, right as it's about to happen. I can't, you know, create it ahead of time. So I'll post it in the, in the group and I'll also post it in the event just both places so that everybody can get to it but yeah you'll click on that event on your laptop and then it'll um open up the netflix watch party and then you know you'll be in there you'll watch it with everybody and um watch it together so okay yeah it's exciting um i'm excited to see it come to real life i love tessa thompson so so do i yeah, yeah huge fan of her so i cannot wait to see and the the trailer looked amazing so um really excited to watch that so we will check that out um any final thoughts on the dating playbook before we wrap it up i liked it it was a four star for me i mean like i said i like the cheesy romance you know this one was funny to me um, good sex scenes. She wrote them, you know, kept my attention for me to pretty much read 75% of it on Monday and just not want to stop was pretty, says something about the book. Um, but again, like I'm easy. If, give me a love story and I'm, <laughs> I'm all in. So give me all the romance. I was, 
as I was telling the ladies earlier, I don't like romance books, the cheesy romance, whatever you call it. I don't like them. But yeah. I read this book and I actually did enjoy it. I think it, because to me, it wasn't so mushy. Like some books are over the top mushy where it's just constant like googly eyes and dates and things like that. And this wasn't that to me. Like they had their hot scenes, but it was more like, okay, we're going to keep it business. And although I think you're hot, like it just, it wasn't too mushy. I think, I think it was a, a good balance right. of romance and hate and keeping it business. And it was a nice spin because in most cases it's either like, I really hate you. We don't get along. Let's not talk. Or it's like we're dating and then they have their own problems and stuff like that. So yeah, it was a nice spin on a And the novel. scenarios were believable, which in a lot of romance, I find that they're the, the you know, the scenes are not believable. Yep. That's absolutely it. I agree. I'm a, I'm a fan of Farah, and I definitely want to go, you know, dive into her catalog. Um, Mia Sosa, I don't know if you guys... Uh, what is that book? The Worst Best uh, Man. What'd you say? The Worst Best Man. Yes, The Worst Best Man. I read mm -hmm. that at the beginning of this year. Love So it. good. Her sex scenes. <laughs> I read it in one. So, yes. So mm -hmm. her sex scenes are so Hot. good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> it's some serious <laughs> stuff. So um, that's definitely one to check out if you, if you haven't. She's coming out with another one next year, I think. I think it has, it might be a sequel. I'm not sure, but it, I think it, it, it may is going to be a series. Yes. Yeah. So if Mia Sosa is definitely um, oh, and a Alyssa good one. Cole. Yes. And then I, she has a couple of other books too that I want to go back into her catalog. So there's so many authors like that, that I just fall in love with. And then, because again, the cover is appealing <laughs> to <laughs> what, you know, so you just don't even look at the past stuff, but I definitely want to go back and, and, check them out um next month i don't have the book with me right now but we are reading rabbit um by patricia williams i've heard so many great things about this book and um her memoir so i'm excited to read because i've heard it's out there it's uh the show is great so i'm sure the book is out there <laughs> yeah a I lot of people have y'all ever read what is it um <laughs> What is the book, the memoir? It's Cupcake something. Um, yeah. oh, I can't remember yeah. the author. But, but they said that that book is just, this book is just as out there as that one was. So I'm excited because I like that one too. Um, I can't oh, remember wait, what the name the author? The, the one that we're reading or the one that I'm talking about? The one you're talking about. Give me a second. I was about to say, mine is downstairs. I actually have that hardback. A piece of cake. A piece, of, a piece of cake. A okay. piece of cupcake cake. brown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard oh, of yeah. That. She's crazy. Yeah, she's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it. somebody said that uh, Rabbit is like just as crazy. Um, oh, wow. Okay. As this I started, one. I started listening to a little bit of the audio book. It, it, it's, a good, it's a good sounding read. Okay. Good. Because I, I have that book in every format. I think I bought the ebook when it was on sale for. <laughs> You know, five yep. bucks. I have the or the ebook. I have the audio book. I bought it when it was on sale, and I have the physical copy now. So, um, uh, I'll definitely be listening to it. Um, but I've heard it's like just as wild. Um, I want to say, was she a prostitute or something in her book too? I Maybe. So. I think so. Um, I that was like was. Thirteen years ago. Oh my goodness. Cupcake was wild, or a piece of yeah. cake. I mean, cupcake brown. Yeah, that story. There was parts in there. <laughs> it was <laughs> wild. And I got my mom to read it at some point and she was listening to it on a road trip <laughs> and my grandparents were in the back of the car, like asleep, but the language was just so much that they just woke up and were like, woke them up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, mom, you're probably gonna have to turn that off because it's not appropriate whatsoever. But yeah, so I'm excited. Well, Pat's language from the first episode of the show, I was like, oh, I'm hooked. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not sure. Is it so based sure on her real life? Is the show based on her real life as well? Or kind is it just of. kind of, kind of? Okay. I don't what think it's show? a whole lot, but I think bits and pieces what maybe. Show? It's on BET Plus. Um, um, what Ms. is it called? Miss Pat? Pat? Pat. I think, Pat. It's, I think Pat. it's called Miss Pat, but it's on BET Ms. Plus. Pat. Okay. Um, so I think I'm going to read the book first 
before I watch the show. I don't have B. Well, I had BET Plus just to watch. Uh, what's that show? The First Wives All Club, BET. and then Sisters. Oh, yeah, that was it. Sisters on BET. I had to get. I think the first season from there. I don't know. That show's got me hooked too. Yeah. I watch way too much TV. But um, yeah, I do. I watch... all, the, all the Queen's Men is good too. Is it? Yeah. It's on BET Plus? Yeah. I just finished the last episode today. It's really good. It's good. Man, y'all about to make me get a BET Plus subscription. That's the last thing I need. Like another one. <laughs> I've got Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max. Mm hmm. What else? Uh, I have oh. Showtime, but only when The Shy is on there. I've yeah. got Stars and Cable that I pay two hundred dollars a month for. On top of all of that, so yeah. Did anybody start watching All Kinds of People? Yes, yes. I yeah. watched the first couple of episodes. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. Yep. Wonder I Years like. is pretty good too. If y'all haven't watched that, it comes on tonight. Yeah, that's cute. What is it? What? Wonder Years. They did a remake on the show. Oh, the Wonder it's Years. really good. It's really good. Yeah, but it's an all black family. Yeah, yeah. So that's and this really is good. why I can't read anymore because I'm in here. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> all I get, I might get two books a month, which is good for me because I'm starting to pick up. But yeah, I literally only read our book club pick, and then mm -hmm. you know I get on a, a like a roll. Like I just finished this, so now I want to read something else. But then that'll probably be it until the end of the month when I need to read the book club read, and then. Yeah. <laughs> But I stopped stressing. I read a lot. I read a lot, but I also, like, sometimes I read and watch TV, like, I'm dividing my attention between the two. Listen, that's I exactly what I do. I used to do that. I can't do that anymore. No, I do it during commercials. I, I watch I during do. commercials. I'll read during commercials. That's yeah. kind of how I get reading in is all. But, like, when I'm watching yes, Netflix and stuff right that. now. <laughs> oh. That Apple of Love? Yeah, it's the story of uh, the Dixie Cups, New Orleans girl group. From oh, okay. oh that's cool yeah new orleans has a lot of good based like stories i like that um yeah if y'all squid games if y'all aren't afraid of gory stuff that's a good one. Oh, i don't like that kind of stuff mm -mm. yeah you won't nothing don't watch scary it. nothing scary it's not scary it's just nothing scary nothing gory yeah None it's gory that. Bloody. Straight up, it's gory. <laughs> well, I heard it's... they're coming out with a new Chucky in like what a week or two. Lord, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jamie wow. Lee Curtis is still chafing. Michael oh, Halloween. Right. That's probably my favorite though. I love how Halloween. Halloween's probably my favorite. And then, of course, if y'all can see, the Sanderson sisters are like <laughs> <laughs> the end all. Oh, me and my witch. daughter just did did a yeah. We just did a TikTok. I have a ton of these shirts with them. I smell children and all kinds of stuff. I've watched it three times already, and that was before October hit. So I'm obsessed with this? that movie. What is the that Hocus one? Pocus? Oh, okay, yeah. If you, it, they'll play it a hundred times on Freeform during the month of October. So I'm sure it'll probably be on tonight <laughs> or tomorrow. It yeah, it's that's favorite Halloween movie. So, um, anyways, thank y'all for joining me enjoyed Thank our discussion <laughs> no problem um and then i will see you guys in a month well well if you guys join well yeah i guess the next chat will be before we have the movie mm -hmm. night so yeah i'll see Wait, you guys in a month to discuss rabbit okay all right y'all have a good night, good night. Good good night. night. Bye. bye bye